I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Kenneth Lang of KML Consultants. And if you need to know how to get your business noticed and get more clients through LinkedIn, he is the person to talk to. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, how are you, Elizabeth? Thank you very much for having me today. I'm going to be the, the KML Consultants. I'm going to be your LinkedIn concierge. If you need some white glove treatment, you have a profile, don't know exactly what to do, whether you're in transition or a small business owner, you're, you're, you're looking at the right guy here. I can do whatever you need to do for your specific uh, business or situation. So a lot of people are using LinkedIn and I tell you, I've been trying to build mine and I get a, a ton of invites every day and people are sending me messages wanting to do business with me and it's a little overwhelming, but how do you get someone to stand out? What I, what I always like to preach is it's not just about sending the connection request. Obviously, it should be personalized and not, a, not sent through um, automation like most of them are. But then it's the next step. You connect with someone, send a follow-up, thanks for connecting, suggest some type of a call to action, whether it's a virtual cup of coffee or maybe eventually meeting in person. That's how you're going to stand out. Also, when you send the connection request, see how you can help someone else. It's not always about, even if you need a job or business, be the person who puts yourself first. And people really do appreciate that. Absolutely. So what would you say people need to have in the background of their profile, that big strip where you can put a picture? And how do you get that picture? Well, there's different things you can do. First of all, if you have a picture that resonates with you, whether it's from your website, you can absolutely do that. There's a lot of um, things like word art uh, and Canva where you can build words that mention who you are and they will build and will build it out for you based on the color, based on the size. And that's another great branding aspect. I know some people actually put their URL in the background too. And anyone who needs any help on how to do that, definitely let me know. It's not keyword specific, but it will definitely set you apart because very few people, like you say, use that blue background. Right. And Canva is an amazing resource. I use that to do the thumbnails for the YouTube videos that I shoot with people. And it helps you size it to the right size. But if you're not used to using tools like that, or you're not going to use it all the time, like I use it every day, but most right. people wouldn't, then somebody like you who really knows how to use it is a good resource for that. Yeah, absolutely. Because one of the things that you want to think about is, of all the words out there, how, what do you want people to know about you? you know, visuals are so much better than sometimes words. So you can put down, let's say, the top four or five skills or things or value adds. You can determine the color of the layout. And the good thing is you can change it up any time you want to. You know, most people don't think of LinkedIn as a, as a living document, but it is. It's not a, like a resume. You can tweak it. You can update it every day, every week. And you can also, through your dashboard, to see what's working and what's not. Right. Can you get statistics from LinkedIn? Uh, depends on what statistics you're looking for. You can uh, definitely find out people who have viewed your profile. You can find out um, how many searches you've been in a week. It's a little bit deceiving because when you look at views, how many people viewed your profile, that's not actually looking at your profile. That's how many times it shows up in the feed. So if you think about scrolling down a Google um, list, or anything. Anytime someone scrolls down, they see your um, information. That's considered um, a like, or not not a like, but it's actually a view. And I think most people miss that. And LinkedIn's algorithm, which no one really knows for sure, is something that a lot of us have tried to figure out. And I think myself and a couple of us have done this to the best of our ability. We always say, think about being engaging. If you have a post, you want people to stay on the post not just like it, because there's something called dwell time, which is a LinkedIn formula, which is the longer someone stays on a post, the more likely that post is gonna show up on the feed more often. And also the first hour you post is the most important because if LinkedIn doesn't see any notice or any information, they will just push that post down. These are little tips that someone like myself would absolutely be able to work with someone on for, for, for what they need to do. And I honestly don't think people realize that for every single place where you can put information about yourself online. There are secrets. <laughs> there definitely are. People make the assumption that you can only put something in one place. If you have skills, you don't just put them in the about section. You don't just put them in your job descriptions. You put them under skills on the bottom because I've worked on the recruiter side and I've seen how the recruiter LinkedIn works. 
These recruiters do Boolean searches, which is multiple searches all the time, and they look for keywords. Don't assume that if you don't put Microsoft Office on there that they're gonna find you. That you put it down, even if you assume everyone knows that you do it, you can always take it off or tweak it. I think that's a big hidden tip that I keep finding with people. And also in your about section, put your email address. You wanna make sure people find you. Don't just assume they're gonna connect with you um, or they're gonna know how to get in touch with you. Right, so these are great tips. So you probably have a ton of those and they're kind of the same, like the whole keyword thing is the same for Google, YouTube, LinkedIn, everything. But then LinkedIn has its own special algorithms that it uses, so to speak, to find people and to put people in higher placements and to do to put you where you need to be as a business owner. And that's what you work with people on as well, right? Yeah, I mean, think about it from this perspective. On Google, the first thing on your name that's going to probably show up is your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. URL. Um, again, that's how Google does things. And it's the little things. I, I always tell people it's things that they may not realize that they should do, like on an email signature. Put your LinkedIn URL as part of your email signature. It's just another way to promote yourself. That's a great idea. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> minutes we've been talking. I know a little bit about LinkedIn. So I haven't done this for a while, but I had in the past linked media. So linked my website to LinkedIn. You can still do that, right? You can do that. And they have something called a featured section now also where um, you can post videos, you can post presentations, you can post things you've posted there. But just to make sure people realize that's not from a job seeker perspective, that's not going to make a significant difference. Uh, from a marketing aspect, it will. Job seekers should focus on the first 220 characters of the headline, the about section, and the skills. And think about it also that of those 220 characters, only the first line is probably going to show up on a recruiter's search. So you want to really make that first line stand out. You may be great afterwards, but if they're looking for a project manager and you don't have that on the first line, they may just go to someone else. And that's how you, I mean, these are little things I've picked up over the years too. Yes, and LinkedIn is so important. I know you're right. When I Google somebody, their LinkedIn profile is the first thing that comes up. And if I meet somebody who's a business person, I always look at their LinkedIn profile, always. And if they don't have one, I'm kind of like, I wonder why. <laughs> it's it's almost like having a website today, right? Having a LinkedIn profile. It's important. I think also think about it this way. First of all, the numbers that are thrown out there are very um, confusing. There are, yes, there are 700 million users on LinkedIn, but probably less than 1% of them actually use the platform. So you want to drill down to that. And then on top of that, you want to look at it from the perspective that of those people that are on the platform, how many people are engaging? Not as many as you think. Um, one of the tips nowadays I suggest is on a Zoom call, people should just put their LinkedIn URLs in the chat, save the chat, and then use that as a mechanism to follow up after. Um, it, it's a good handy tip. It's something that we would used to go, go with business cards. We'd say, here's a business card. Can't do that probably for a while. So use all the opportunities and the technology you can um, to your best advantage. So are you mostly counseling people who are looking for jobs on how to make their Zoom profile stand out to recruiters? Or are you in general Zoom training, doing general Zoom training? Um, the Zoom training is part of not just the LinkedIn profiles, but nowadays all the interviews are online too. So you okay. really need to think about from the video interviewing perspective, uh, making sure your technology works. I can't tell you how many times I'm on a Zoom call and people are still trying to get onto the call two or three minutes after the fact and the, the link doesn't work or there's background. You want to put your best foot forward every time. You know, we talked before about the Zoom backgrounds. I'm not a fan of Zoom backgrounds. I mean, it's one thing if you're talking to someone in your family, but it, it's just kind of fake and you want to make yourself stand out in a positive way. So if you do put a video and say you shoot your video on Zoom because it's an easy way to do it, but if you put a video on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. what is the best length of video or should you just put a little snippet and direct them to your website? And what's the best way to use video on LinkedIn? Well, definitely in small snippets. And also if you can put some text as well, because again, the attention span of most of us is very short. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just the way it is. And then, how are you going to stand out against someone else? 
one of the things which I found really helpful now is they have something called open to work, which a lot of people put on. It's that uh, green frame. And you don't necessarily want to do that. But what other people have been doing is using something like um, PowerPoint. They've been putting a different color frame around there with different information. I mean, just use it as another marketing tool. Yeah, I think I accidentally had that turned on for a while and I had to go turn it off because I really wasn't looking for a job. <laughs> um, but so do you find a lot of recruiters are using LinkedIn now to find employees? Well, they are. And there's different levels of a recruiter. There's something called the recruiter seat, which is basically you're paying hundreds of dollars. And that's where um, they do a lot of the major, major searches. And that's why it's so important to stand out. A lot of recruiters are on LinkedIn. but even with that, um, it's not just about connecting, it's about following up and being uh, you know, front of mind. I think what most people probably don't realize is that more and more people use LinkedIn on mobile versus desktop. Mm. So that appearance is, is just as important. You don't have as much um, space on the profile to actually see things, as much real estate, and they're not gonna be able to go through things. But these are all part of a networking strategy, which is something else I teach. It's not just LinkedIn by itself, it's, um, the follow-ups. It's the work and you have to put work into it. Um, this is not going to happen snap of the fingers now or ever. There are so many people that I network with and I and that network with me and sometimes we follow up and sometimes we don't. How do you pick who to follow up with? What I've started to do actually for these times is I've created a spreadsheet and every time I have a conversation with someone I make a note of what we talked about, what the possible next steps are, it's it's easy for me that way. I do it probably first thing in the morning as I'm having my cup of coffee or maybe on a Sunday morning when I'm just able to do that. And you do that pretty much after a call. Just put it down there, make a decision. I'm going to contact someone in two weeks or they weren't a good fit for me. But even more than that, find out about them so you can put someone else in touch with them. It doesn't just stop with a conversation with you and someone else. I know people looking for jobs. I reach out to them all the time based on conversations I have because that's what I would want done to me. Well, what I found amazing since quarantine, I was using LinkedIn some, and then I really started using social media during quarantine to help me build Fireside. I used LinkedIn mostly because that's my favorite platform, quite honestly. And I have made so many friends that I've never met in person, and I have made so many contacts through LinkedIn. It just is mind boggling. <laughs> It's great now, especially in these times, you can network in ways you never thought you could before. Doesn't matter if you're in the same town or 3,000 miles away. I mean, there's a sense of community, I think, that's probably been missing from a lot of us now recently because we're all in different stages of quarantine and comfort levels going out. You know, even in person networking events now, they're having a few uh, socially distant. I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be with, with one. And it's, it's, these are just challenging times. You want to just take advantage of what's available to you. And I think that the reason I like LinkedIn is because I feel like people are more serious. So you're really getting serious business people on LinkedIn. Usually. Usually. Are. Well, I, I, a lot of us get um, what's considered like a spam or a bot request. It's the same message that multiple people send just with one or two tweaks to the word. And if you connect, they're coming right on with this sales pitch. I need, you know, I'm, I'm here for accounting for you. I'm here for financial planning. And then we all get the um, Facebooky like, hi, how are you? Let's connect. And they don't have a profile. I mean, uh, they're just random people. Why? <laughs> because everyone's on LinkedIn now. People, yeah. this has been, I mean, now it's everyone has taken their, um, themselves there. And we report them all the time, but it's kind of like um, playing guac. You know, when you, when you hit something and another one comes up and another one comes up. And at some points, it's just not worth it. I will say right now in this call, anyone who wants to connect with me, do it. It would be helpful if you personalize the invite in a, in a couple of sentences. It doesn't have to be um, anything major, but then think about it from the perspective too. When you're trying to reach people now, everyone's busy at different times. So use LinkedIn on the weekends sometimes because that's when you have more engagement. The people on LinkedIn on the weekends are much more engaged. There's less of them, but they're there. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Yeah, I'm learning quite a bit. So when you have, when you, when somebody hires you as a consultant, what are the first steps that you do with them? First steps would be just having a conversation along these lines, just to get a sense of what they want to do. Cause I don't want to 
if you have someone feel that they're using my services and not getting out what they want to. And then if they're interested, um, much like with a resume, um, I want to ask some general questions of them because I want to know how to focus the session. Um, I just had a session yesterday with someone who is in Vermont and he wants to relocate. And I, I said some things which I don't regret saying, but they're not easy to say. Um, like, you know, your picture scares me, which it did. I said, you're not, and, and he, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you told me not everyone would, but then it's little things. Your profile should not just reflect where you're, where you're living. You know, if you're in Vermont and you want to move, get an opportunity in Boston, a recruiter is not going to find you because they're not going to be that specific in a search. Mm -hmm. You want to think about it from their perspective too, not your perspective. Well, that's interesting. I, my son, I talk about my son all the time, but when he graduated uh, from school, from college, he went on LinkedIn and posted his resume and he actually got a job from a recruiter on LinkedIn. Congratulations. His first job. Yeah, that was a few years ago, but it is a powerful tool. And I think you're right. It's, it's an even more powerful tool if you use it the right way. You also want to be cognizant now. LinkedIn's been around almost 20 years mm -hmm. and there's multi-generations on the platform now. So they also communicate differently just by how they were brought up. Um, so, so you want to understand that. I mean, someone who is um, in their 20s was brought up with a different mindset and um, it's not a good or bad thing, but that people of a certain age need to recognize when they're reaching out to people on LinkedIn or interviewing, this is the way it is. And you want to position yourself as a mentor in, at times and maybe not make them feel threatened because they look at you and they're like, oh my God, I how am I going to manage this person? So it's part of just building a business conversation, the same with a small business owner. You know, this is the world we live in now. Um, we're on our phones, we text, um, we're distracted. Um, this is just the way it is. So I would always say someone should be on LinkedIn for a certain amount of time each day. Uh, don't be on here all day. It's not the same as meeting you and meeting others, but just think about it and have a strategy. So how often do you think somebody should be on LinkedIn? And I mean, how long? Because I would, for an hour a day. I would say every day would be different in terms of what you do. I would spend um, Sundays pretty much planning out what you want to do for the week, um, much like you might with job search or business. So it's, these are the relationships. It used to be Monday mornings, Friday afternoons. A lot of people were on LinkedIn as they were getting into the office, um, mm -hmm. trying to get the day started. That's changed now. I think... You want to use the time that you're comf most comfortable with. If you're a morning person, I'd go on in the morning. Um, if you're an afternoon person, do that. But I would probably go on, if it were me, three times a day, maybe half an hour each time, because you can have different people on the platform at different times. Uh, and then again, and you play that by ear. I mean, every day is different, every situation is different, but that's just a good rule of thumb. And you'll see what happens as you get more engagement. And if you have a lot of content and you want to post over a series of weeks, what do you think about using something like a Hootsuite scheduler to post content on LinkedIn? I think as long as you are comfortable with the um, technology to use it, but my only concern with something like Hootsuite is when something comes up and um, you've protected, you, you have to change something on the fly, would you know how to change it on the fly? I also don't necessarily like the idea of having the same content going across multiple platforms. I'm on Twitter, but I'm not posting the same way on Twitter. It's more for um, exposure. People are not going to follow me on Twitter um, the same way they would on LinkedIn. I do think what I'm finding now is even Instagram is even a better resource um, than, um, than Twitter is for those that are in transition because you can tell a story there. Instagram has really come into its own these last few years and it's outpacing almost everything else except maybe Facebook. Um, so, it, so that is interesting because a lot of times people will just post the same thing across all the platforms, but I think you're right. I really feel like you're right about that. Think about who's on, who's on Instagram. I mean, the people on Instagram, they may have a, they may see it, but recruiters now and a lot of people looking for opportunities, they're looking for things quick. They're looking to stand out. There's nothing wrong. And I, I actually was at a networking event about a year ago where I spoke to someone there. I said, you know, come up with a different idea. So she came up, she had a deck of cards and she talked about how each of the cards 
mentioned related to something that she could do. So if you think about it from a visual aspect, you know, it's like not the elevator pitch, hi, this is me in 30 seconds. Come up with, with, a, with a shtick and you can do that. And what's the worst thing that happens? No one likes it. So you do another one. Right. Well, that's, that's actually brilliant. <laughs> you know, you've got some excellent ideas. Uh, I think people that work with you can really make a difference in their business. Can you, do you have an example of somebody who increased their revenue through working with you? Got a good Definitely. Um, I've worked with two or three small business owners who had their doubts in the beginning. And I said to them at the time, you can't just do it once a week. You can't just do it when you feel like it. And as they did it, they got um, much more um, business, again, business in the sense that they got the recognition, they got um, future clients. Uh, it's very hard to quantify how much money you can make as a business owner on LinkedIn specifically, but it's about the relationships that, that you do from there. And I think one of the things that's so important is to take advantage of everything you're comfortable with. For a long time, I was not a video person. I wouldn't dare shoot video. Now I feel better about it. So, you know, stay in your comfort zone for sure. Yeah, I hope we all feel better about it because I think we're realizing that we all look okay. <laughs> I mean, everybody hates watching themselves on video, me especially. But Well, it's the little things like, and it's okay to, to joke about certain things. I would say with a recruiter now, especially something to think about because we've talked about a lot is COVID-19 concerns. Feel free to ask what businesses are going to do for you on COVID-19 and, and what legally um, I found out legally things they should be doing and you want to make sure that everything's in place and can you work from home and what happens if I'm in the office and I don't like what's there what's going to be the policy and there's nothing wrong with asking those questions in the beginning you'd rather find out beforehand than after because especially now um, as hard as it is to believe that you people in transition are very wanted in some cases because they have transferable skills and those skills have nothing to do with what you may have done before. But people just don't, they're in a, basically, they're in a block. I did this, I have to do this. Well, no, you don't. No, I actually have a chemistry degree and I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, but I enjoy it. I love talking to people and hearing about their businesses and hearing how they help people. So I don't know that we really need to touch on this because I hope by now, Kenneth, everybody would know this but especially for young people looking for jobs, what should they not put on social media? Well, they should not post something on Facebook that they don't want everyone else to feel comfortable with. I mean, I know people post that they've gone to parties and things and look, Facebook is a different platform, but you also have to think about what you write everywhere and, and what people write about you. I mean, there are ways with settings to make things um, less available. Um, I always think as a matter of course, think before you post something, think before you send an email back, just think, even if it's another 30 seconds or so, because once it's out there, it's really hard to take it back. And especially nowadays, tone is so important. What you think makes sense, because you're reading it, someone else may read differently. I can't tell you how many conversations have gone um, south, because you say one thing, they think you mean something else, and before you know it, it's like, I don't want to be bothered. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really true. I know way back when I decided that I was never going to put anything in an email that I wouldn't want read aloud to the whole world. Right. Um, and I've tried to stick by that with everything that I post and do. And because even the fact that you don't know who else is going to get that email, if you, even if you send it to one person, I mean, I've, I've been on email chains both ways. I would also say as a matter of course, after two or three emails, you either pick up the phone or start a new chain because you forget after a while what, what the original chain was, update a subject line so it's a different line. I mean, even in terms of sending emails out, you want to catch people's attention. I mean, think about it from the perspective of how many emails do you get in a day? But why would you open one up versus another? Right. And I get the emails from the same people day after day after day trying to do the hard sell. And... I think that's why coming back to LinkedIn and the way that you're doing the networking is we're all barraged with that. If we're working in a business, you know, I can increase your leads. I, I can sell you, I can do this, I can do that. And really you want the relationship first. Definitely. I, and it's the little things. I mean, if nothing comes of a call, nothing comes of a call. 
I mean, it's, it's not the, the focus. And a lot of the things I suggest, again, it's just best practice from my experience. I also think having a Calendly account, a free account, so it can link to your Google Calendar or whatever you use is really helpful because when you set up meetings that way, it'll link to your calendar so you don't double book and triple book something. And I guess the other thing I'd suggest is also allow yourself some me time, block out time on your calendar when you're busy. Even if you're not really, really busy, just to kind of re, you know, regroup, go out, just relax. Because if you're on this 24 seven every day, um, it's gonna get even worse and more monotonous. I think that is an excellent piece of advice. And I'd read that years ago to make a meeting with yourself. Exactly, I, I put Dan out of the office and I'm out of the office in the sense that I'm not networking or working, but I'm just doing something else. And we have to, especially now, self-care is so important. And uh, this is great advice. So how do people get a hold of you? Uh, through LinkedIn? <laughs> so LinkedIn, obviously. Um, <laughs> my email address, it's, it's, my website is www.kmlconsultants.com. Okay. Um, my email address is also ken at kmlconsultants.com. If you go to my profile, um, my phone number is there, my email address is there. That's another comfort level thing. I'm happy to put my phone number on there because I want to be contacted. Understand people don't want to be, but you should definitely put your email address on. And I don't think this is much needed as it was before, but when you do a resume, you should also put your LinkedIn URL on your resume as a, as a link. Mm -hmm. Don't assume, again, people are going to know to do this. You want to make it as easy as possible for them with whatever you do. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it's really been enlightening, I must say, <laughs> speaking with you today, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Okay.